Hi, and welcome to the Ideal Calibrations How to Calibrate Your Gas Detector Series. Today we're going to be looking at the RKI GX2003, and we've got this one compliments of the City of Belleville Fire Department, so we'd like to thank Chief Grant and all the firefighters over there for letting us borrow this for the video. First, go ahead and just hold the center button to turn the monitor on. It will beep, then let go of it. It'll give you the time to cal, as well as the date that needs to be caled comes up, shows you the current date, as well as the battery. And it comes up to the normal screen. So what we're going to be doing is ca calibrating this monitor. The first thing you're going to do is take a zero reading. Make sure you're in clean air and hold the top button. It'll ask you to hold it, give you an adjusting zero message, then it'll come up and say zero adjusted. Let's go ahead and release the air key. Okay, now if you see that it has a zero for the LEL, 20.9 for the oxygen level, zero for the H2S, and zero for CO, you're good to go. But we're going to be calibrating this monitor. We're going to be using RKI mix, which is 25 parts per million hydrogen sulfide, 50 parts per million carbon monoxide, 50% LEL methane, 12% oxygen with a nitrogen balance. So make sure that the, reading, that the gas you have matches those ratings there. So, in order to enter calibration mode, you're going to hold the shift button and press the display adjust button right there at the same time. There we go. Now it comes up with some options. It has auto calibration, single calibration, contrast, and normal operation. We're going to be going to auto calibration, but if you only wanted to calibrate one sensor, say the CO or the H2S or the methane, you would go to single calibration. Up for us, we're going to go to do a full four gas calibration. So we click once there. Now it'll come up and it'll give us the values for all the gases. Make sure that the CH4 matches the methane that you have on your gas cylinder, as well as the oxygen, H2S, and the CO. So, got all that correct, we're going to put this down. Then we're going to take a demand flow regulator, make sure it's demand flow. And what that means is that as you have a vacuum pulling out of your gas detector, it's going to give that same amount of gas to the monitor. That way you don't overwhelm the vacuum by using a you know, 0.5 liter per minute flow rate regulator or a 1 liter per minute flow rate regulator. That will force the gas past it. So you want to make sure you have a nice demand flow regulator or a flow matching regulator. And you guys, if you have a question as to whether or not your regulator is, feel free to get me, shoot me an email or you can ask whoever provides your gas detection equipment and they'll help you out. So to start with, screw this into the top. a little snug and then go ahead and hit enter on your gas detector this will send it into calibration mode you'll have some zeros and then just plug it into the top now the pump on the RKI will start pulling gas in immediately and you'll watch the values will start going up Let's see we can, there we go now we can see it so you'll see the values go up now on the side one of the things about the RKI is it doesn't have an auto cal procedure with a timer countdown in it like a lot of the other gas detectors out there do. So what we're going to do is let this go for about a minute and then we're going to hit calibrate on it. We're going to hit enter to accept the values. One thing you want to watch for is that the values are stable. Now they might go up and down a little bit of drift, but as long as they're relatively stable and not still rising, generally you're good to go. We let it go for about a full minute. Set there. And we have about 20 seconds remaining here. One thing I do want to caution you guys about is a lot of times with demand flow regulators, people have a tendency to leave them in the gas cylinder. And you really don't want to do that. You always want to make sure that you, when you're done with the gas cylinder, you move the regulator. These can tip over, they can fall off, and it can damage the internal threads on the cylinder as well as gas leaking out into the regulator and, and it's starting to suck the hydrogen sulfide out of there. Now we're at about a minute and a half and our values are pretty stable. We're at 50, 12, 25, and 52, 51 or so. So that's okay. We're just going to hit enter right now and it'll come up and it'll say auto calibration pass. Now you know you've calibrated the unit. So we're going to remove this here so we stop wasting gas. Come down to normal operation and it's probably going to go into alarm on us. There you go. That's okay, that's just from the residual gas that's been in there from the calibration. So we're just going to let it go for a second, and then hit reset. There you go, now you're good to go. You're going to want to watch these values, make sure they go all the way back to 0, 20.9, 0, 0.0, and 0 here. So we're going to give that carbon monoxide, there it goes. Now, So now we're all back to good values. 
Okay, well, you guys are all set. The monitor's calibrated. I hope you have enjoyed this video that we've made for you here. If you have any questions, feel free to give us a call. Our phone number is 734-956-0539, and my email address is james at idealcalibrations.com. I'd like to thank you guys all for listening, and again, I'd like to thank the City of Belleville Fire Department and Chief Grant for letting us borrow this monitor to make the video. You guys have a great day, and keep safe.